Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Henry Lee, and I'm the uh, director of the um, Environment and Natural Resource Program at the Belfer Center for Science and International Affairs. And I'm here with Leonardo Morgheri, who has just written uh, a report on oil shale and its potential in North America. So this, the, the scope of the study has been, uh, in a way, unique and its conclusions are multifaceted and in a way interesting because in my view the United States may reach a shale oil production of uh, around uh, 5 million barrels per day by 2017 if the price of oil remains uh, higher enough, I mean uh, $85 per barrel in 2013 to $65 per barrel in 2017 and this possibility exists because the, the resources are huge, the technology is, uh, is continually, continuously improving, and the capability of the industry to deal with shale and tidal oil formation is going better and better. But the problem is that uh, shale, both shale oil and shale gas, requires a huge drilling intensity which means that you need to drill continuously and to continuously bring online new wells in order not only to increase production but just to maintain production. This means that, for example, in North Dakota, uh, it takes in, uh, in now more than 1,000 wells per year brought online just to maintain the production reached at the end of 2012. But of course, uh, this drilling intensity will become a problem to me also in those areas of the United States which present uh, a densely populated area. So, so far the shale oil revolution and the shale gas revolution have occurred in places like Texas and North Dakota that have huge territories and scarce population. But uh, and this is uh, the, the, the best, let's say, fit for drilling intensity. But when you go in places like New York, like Pennsylvania, or uh, many other states in the United States, I think that this drilling intensity will become the first environmental problem. Uh, which, uh, and, and of course, drilling intensity will, 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 will represent a huge, huge issue in Europe, for example which has a density of population which is higher, much higher than the United States. The, uh, I tend to believe that the countries that will be more affected by the U.S. shale revolution will be not the Middle Eastern countries, but the West African countries and also Canada and Venezuela, which are traditional and safe uh, supplier of oil to the United States. This simply because the, the, the price, the, the, the cost of oil in these two countries is so much higher then they, they are particularly vulnerable in case of uh, uh, a sudden dip of oil prices in the next few years. Oil. So there could be also paradoxical outcomes from this revolution and not necessarily the Middle East will be the first victim on this. Now, if you look at your study, uh, you have a price range of $85 falling over the next decade to around $65. At these rates, you can get the dramatic increase in oil shale production from about 1.5 million barrels a day to about 5 million barrels yeah. a day by 2017. Uh, what if the price goes lower or if the technology doesn't improve as fast? Well, this will be the real great problem of shale because uh, even if uh, the cost of producing shale oil is generally lower than expected and thought, uh, the price is, all, is, is nonetheless uh, significantly uh, higher than for other conventional productions. So uh, I, I see that uh, in most cases a $65 per barrel is consistent with uh, maintaining a profitability of several of several areas of Eagle Ford, of Bakken, North Dakota, Eagle Ford, Texas, the Permian Basin. But below that, there could be for sure an immediate stopping of uh, drilling. Still, I, you know, the, the jury is still out of what may happen in the long term. And, uh, but for sure, for the next 
two decades or so, this revolution will alter the energy patch in the United States. And the, the, the big consequence that this revolution may have globally is not for shale, but probably is in the possibility to use horizontal drilling and hydraulic fracturing to, to get more oil out of conventional mature formations all over the world. You know that, that by now the, the average rate of recovery for conventional oil formation globally is 35% using standard technology. By applying these technologies that have been key to the recovery of shale and titoil in the United States to the rest of the world, even to conventional formations, you may probably recover much more oil in the future. And this is already happening in the United States because horizontal drilling and hydraulic fracturing have been applied extensively to conventional, nature conventional oil formation in the United States with very good results. So the bottom line of, of your study is that uh, if prices remain uh, uh, between 65 and 85 dollars, and if the technology continues to improve at the rate it has been improving, the United States uh, will be producing a significant portion of its total oil consumption within uh, now in 2017, yeah. which is a really good news for the country, uh, given our history of concern over energy security. Uh, uh, so um, while there's a lot of uncertainty still, uh, it looks overall that the message is very positive. Yeah. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, I think that this is a paper that uh, will be a significant contribution to the energy debate, and I, I thank you for producing it. Thank you, and thank you to the Belfort Center and the uh, Everett Kennedy School and the Roy family to, to allow me to, to do this study.